Welcome to Health Watch, presented by Novant Health. I'm June Baker, and I'll be your host today. As always, we have a great show planned for you today. I have three amazing guests, and I can't wait for you to meet them and learn about what they do. Our first guest today will be Dr. Lily Thames, the Chief Value Officer and President of New Hanover Health, which is part of NHRMC and now Novant Health. Our second guest is Dr. Kyle McCool, and he's with NHRMC Radiation Oncology here in Supply. And our final guest today is Kevin Hodge. He's the Program Manager and Chief Transport RN with Airlink and Vitalink Critical Care Transport, again with NHRMC, now Novant Health. So please join me in welcoming these great guests to our show today on HealthWatch. welcome Dr. Lily Thames, the Chief Value Officer and President of New Hanover Health, which is part of Novant Health now. Thanks for having me, June. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry we haven't met sooner. <laughs> You're so interesting. So um, tell me a little bit about your background. Um, like, where, where are you from? Sure, yeah. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. I uh, did a lot of my medical school training there and my internship. And then from there, wanted to go out west and explore the world and did my anesthesia residency at Oregon Health and Science University and did a fellowship in evidence-based evidence -based practice guidelines. Wow, that's your long way from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me about where you went to school. So um, I went to Texas A&M for oh. medical school uh -huh. and then um, Oregon Health and Science University for my anesthesia residency and my fellowship. Nice. nice. And then I also did an executive MBA um, at the University of Tennessee back in 2015. Oh, that's great. So you're a trained anesthesiologist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but eventually you shifted your work into ensuring quality and value of care. So talk to me a little bit about what you drew, what drew you away from anesthesia to quality of care. Well, I definitely still have a passion for taking care of patients. Mm -hmm. um, I love the practice of anesthesiology mm -hmm. and I love that opportunity to make someone feel better and get that you know reward after someone um, completes a surgery sure. but what really drew me was you know with my fellowship and getting to help insurance companies with a lot of their clinical criteria I really felt that I can make an impact on um, po populations not just one yeah. patient at a time but right. thousands of patients and that was really something that I felt that um, could make a real impact in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Well that makes sense, um, but I, it's just hard to, to say that you no longer take care of patients for me. You know, once a doctor, always a doctor. And so, so I want to introduce you as Dr. Lili. And um, so I think that's great, though, to get into the value-based um, program. So since you joined NHRMC in 2019, um, I understand that you helped launch this new product. It's called New Hanover Health Advantage. That's right. And that offers Medicare Advantage plans, right? That's right. So can you talk to me a little bit um, about why NHRMC decided to uh, take on this venture? Sure. So part of the reason why we did this was because we knew that this population here in the coast was really a growing aging population. And we wanted right. to make sure we focused on that population, not just the healthcare aspect, but the financial mm -hmm. aspect of, you know, managing your own healthcare. And it's a very, healthcare is very difficult to navigate there. It's very complex. And so we felt that with our system of trusted providers, um, we could deliver a better product than others have in our own marketplace. Because we know our patients, we know the type of services they need, we know uh, the level of care they need, and we can customize it based on our experience in partnership with our physicians. Mm -hmm. And so we're really excited to um, offer this product in New Hanover, Pender, and Brunswick because we really feel that um, we're b better able to serve our community in this way. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you mentioned uh, providers, physicians and providers. Um, how does New Hanover Health Advantage partner with physicians and the providers? How does that work? Yeah, so we create a network of providers that are high quality and they are able to be part of our network. Mm -hmm. And so we also are developing pilot programs that enable our providers to be successful in managing their patients. Mm -hmm. So things like quality programs, risk adjustment, care management programs, and we do that in collaboration um, with our provider networks. And we really are here to support them so that they can focus on taking care of the patients. And we provide them with the data and the material so that they can be successful in mm -hmm. the journey in value. Mm -hmm. uh, you touched on coverage area. Mm -hmm. um, could you expand on that a little bit more? Sure. So if you're a patient who lives in the counties of New Hanover, Brunswick, or Pender, mm -hmm. you're eligible to sign up for New Hanover Health Advantage. So New Hanover Health Advantage is a Medicare Advantage uh, product that basically bundles all of your medical and pharmacy benefits, and we also have some supplemental, supplemental um, benefits mm -hmm. as well. So anybody in the community that, um, anybody who lives in the communities or in the counties of Brunswick, Pender, and New Hanover are eligible for this particular service, correct? That's right, but you do have to be Medicare eligible. And so you typically- have to be Medicare Eligible. Yep, so that means you typically have to be almost turning 65, 65. moving into the area, mm -hmm. um, or if you have some, uh, some conditions that Medicare allows you to enter Medicare early. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very complex and complicated topic, uh, and I, I don't profess to be um, uh, great at, at insurances, but I imagine there are other viewers out there who have specific questions. Are there resources out there where um, our viewers can go to find out more information? Absolutely. We really encourage everyone to visit us at www.NewHanoverHealthAdvantage.com or visit us at the NHRMC Business Center where on the first floor we have our team ready um, to talk with anyone in the community if they're interested to learn more. Wow. That's so much great information. I really appreciate you being here today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? Well, we really look forward to serving um, our community in this way because we really feel that the full continuum of care, managing quality, um, the patient experience, and making sure we're really taking care of this population is, is really what matters. And um, we really see this as a long-term goal in um, serving the population. So again, if they go to uh, the website, if you would give that to me again. Sure. It's NewHanoverHealthAdvantage.com. And if they go to that website, they will be able to find out uh, a lot of this information. Yes, that's correct? right. And is there um, a phone number or a, a contact person there uh, that they'll find out on the website that they can either call or email yeah. with them? Yep, the best number to call is 910-667-NHHA. That's the acronyms for New Hanover Health Advantage. So um, yeah, definitely call us. Um, we're, we're really Great. looking forward to meeting more of our community members. Great, New Hanover Health Advantage. That's right. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Levy, for coming on today. I appreciate it and I hope to have you back real soon. Well, thank you so much for having me. You're I appreciate it, June. Now, let's welcome Dr. Kyle McCool from NHRMC Radiation Oncology here in Supply. Welcome, Dr. McCool. Thank you for having me. It's my it's, pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. I'm excited to hear all about your um, practice here local. So um, let's start the way I usually start all my um, interviews. I like to know where you went to school, where you came from, where you grew up. Sure. Um, I'm a native of Mississippi. Um, really? I grew up there and um, went to the University of Mississippi for yeah. my undergraduate degree in biochemistry. From there, I went to uh, Georgetown University School of Medicine, uh, spent four years there for medical school, and that's sort of where I uh, discovered where I wanted to go with my really? medical career, and um, uh, then went on to do my radiation oncology training between Boston Medical Center mm -hmm. and New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital in uh, New York. Wow. <laughs> 
you've been around. <laughs> yeah, I've been up and down the East Coast, yeah. and most of my training was in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, I, I grew up in the South, and my goal overall was to try to move back further South, um, and that's part that's of why I ended up here yeah. uh, in North Carolina. Well, it's a great place to live. Weather's good. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, after uh, your residency training, you're trying to find the right yeah. job with the right practice. And um, that's so the hardest part, I think. It really is because uh, you have a number of different options. You can literally go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason I ended up coming here was when I interviewed uh, with the practice I'm with now in Wilmington. Um, I got to meet, you know, some of the members of my practice, some mm -hmm. of the other radiation oncologists, and I knew that by coming here I'd be working with uh, passionate, intelligent physicians that um, would strive to stay at the front edge right. of um, uh, yeah, cancer care. Important. And, and you're right, this is a very beautiful area. There's uh, a number of things I like to do, including uh, boating and fishing. And oh, so you're in the right spot. This then. is the perfect area <laughs> for that. Uh, and an added bonus is my, my wife is, is from this area. She grew up in Wilmington. Really? And uh, yeah, she, well, she, that's nice. she grew up here. And uh, she is also back here now as a, as a physician in the community. Awesome. Uh, as an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, um, how in the world did you decide on radiation oncology? What drew you to that? Yeah, so when I was in medical school, um, you know, there's there's the academic part of it where you're, sure. you're studying, but you also have clinical exposure. Uh, one of my mentors was a neurosurgeon uh, mm -hmm. at Georgetown, and I was doing research with him on a particular type of spinal a tumor, and he would perform the surgery to remove the tumor, and then patients, uh, part of the study was the patients would go get radiation right. to see if there was added benefit for reducing the risk of that tumor coming back right. after it had been yeah. surgically removed. Uh, and it was that point that I got exposure to the whole field of radiation oncology. I got to interact with the doctors at Georgetown, and uh, I was just blown away um, about this sort of non-invasive approach to right. treating cancer. It's not surgical, but we used uh, high energy x-rays and electrons, uh, these different forms of radiation to be able to uh, go deep within the body to treat mm -hmm. uh, tumors uh, and thereby give them a lower risk of their cancer progressing and, and hopefully extend their life. Right. Um, and so it was sort of th that combination of cancer care uh, for patients. Yeah. It also appealed to my interest in physics and uh, technology. Yeah. It's one of the most technologically advanced fields mm -hmm. in medicine and it's constantly changing. It's a big area um, it, where research plays a, an integral Huge role part, yeah. um, for advancing cancer that's care. That's awesome. That is, that's a, a great story and I can see why you were drawn uh, to that. So tell me a little bit about your practice. Now, I know it's called NHRMC Radiation Oncology because you provide um, cancer treatment services uh, to New Hanover, but you also have another name, right? That's right. Uh, so I'm a radiation oncologist. I'm one of um, seven radiation oncologists uh, that provide services in New Hanover County and Brunswick County. Mm -hmm. um, our practice is called Coastal Carolina Radiation Oncology. It's right. a physician-owned private practice, right. uh, but we provide exclusive services for uh, New Hanover uh, Regional Medical Center, uh, which is now part of uh, Novant, Novant Health. Health. Uh, so yeah, we're pleased to be able to provide uh, radiation therapy services, uh, not just Wilmington and Supply, but New Hanover County, Brunswick County, as well as the other surrounding counties, including Columbus and Pender, Pender County. And, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we we can see patients from all over the place. You know, this is a very diverse community. It is a very diverse. Uh, there's also a number of university hospitals within North Carolina, including UNC, UNC. Uh, Wake Forest, Duke. Uh, so a lot of mm -hmm. patients will go there for their initial workup or treatment right. recommendations, but um, they're able to come back here for their radiation therapy or other oncology services. Right. And you practice here in Supply, which is right down the street from us, as well as in Wilmington. So that's great for our um, population around here. That's right. We're just down the road. So talk to me a little bit about when a, you see a new patient, what are the first steps getting them to their radiation oncology uh, treatment? So their first encounter with a radiation oncologist is the consult. That's okay. where they come to the clinic, we introduce ourselves, and we go through 
Pretty much everything they've been through, uh, starting with the initial biopsy or mm -hmm. discovery that they have cancer, all of their workup, which mm -hmm. often includes imaging, and, and um, we'll go over their diagnosis, their stage, and mm -hmm. then we'll talk about uh, what the best approach would be for their treatment. Oftentimes, they've already seen their family doctor, other oncologists, including surgical oncologists and medical oncologists. Right. So we'll kind of use all that information to come up with the best approach to whether or not they need radiation therapy, and if it indeed would provide a benefit, then we'll kind of decide their treatment course at that point. The next visit, we'll invite them back. They'll come for uh, radiation treatment planning. That's usually an hour-long visit where um, we'll map out the area that needs to be treated. So uh, if it's a skin cancer, the setup is more straightforward. We can see the skin cancer, right. we'll map that area out, and that'll kind of give us an idea how to develop their radiation plan for that site. Most cancers, though, are beneath the skin or somewhere yeah. else in the body. Right. And so we'll do some other imaging techniques, including CAT scans mm -hmm. or even MRIs or PET CTs right. to be able to really know where we need to focus the radiation. Mm -hmm will uh, then develop their plan over the course of one to two weeks mm -hmm. once we have all that data. And then uh, the next visit for them will be to come back, we'll verify their setup and treatment positioning, oh, make yeah. sure they're comfortable, mm -hmm. and then treatment begins. Um, and then people that go through radiation therapy can uh, go from anywhere from one treatment, that may be all it takes, uh, to a number of treatments. Mm -hmm. If it's a more protracted treatment course, patients will come once a day, five days a week for a number of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, during the week, they're surrounded by not only their physician, but uh, a number of nurses and radiation therapists that can help guide them through their treatment. Mm -hmm. that, one of the things that appealed to me about radiation oncology is it's multidisciplinary Aspect. Right, that's true. Um, and we're able to talk to experts in other areas of medicine mm -hmm. um, to, to, you know, usually once, um, at least once a day or, or uh, several times a week, we'll have something called a multi multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. Um, like a committee meeting. Yeah, a committee meeting or, or a tumor board, tumor as board. sometimes called. I yeah. love tumor boards. So much great information comes out of that. Yeah, so we're all able to sit down and focus on one patient at a time and, right. and come up with the best course of care for that yeah. person. Yeah. Well, before we run out of time, I want to rem uh, remind everyone that November is Lung Cancer Awareness and remind those that are at high risk to get screenings. How important is that? Oh, it's tremendous. So, you know, we talk about screening. One of the underlying uh, principles of screening is uh, people have better outcomes if you can't if you can catch the cancer early. Right. Um, and so, a lot of folks know about um, breast cancer screening, right. prostate cancer screening. Uh, you know, the dreaded colonoscopy for <laughs> colorectal cancer screening. Right. Um, and that's been around for a while. Um, newer to the scene is uh, this idea of lung cancer screening. Yes. In fact, the um, United States Preventive Task Force within the last uh, 10 years uh, released its recommendations about who should be screened for lung cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the idea is that you know, if we can catch these cancers early, the treatment's often more straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, we have a higher likelihood of cure with fewer side effects. Mm -hmm. So um, the recommendation for uh, uh, lung cancer screening, uh, if you're age 50 to 80 and you have a smoking history of at least 20 pack years, that means you've smoked a pack of cigarettes uh, a day for 20 years or mm -hmm. you've smoked two packs of cigarettes a day for 10 years, that comes out to 20 Same. pack years. Yeah. Uh, and you're a current smoker or you've quit smoking within the last 15 years, you would qualify uh, for, for lung, lung cancer, screenings. yeah, for mm -hmm. lung cancer screening, uh, the best person to ask would probably be your family physician. Family physician, that's always the most important step. It is. They can give you a lot of great information about whether or not you qualify for lung screening, and what it basically entails is a once a year low dose CAT scan or CT scan, right. uh, and that's going to. Basically, it's a form of x-ray imaging, but it, it shows us a clear picture of the lungs to help us see if there are any signs of right. early stage cancer that we need to then further work up. Uh, if you have a positive result that may lead to um, more scans, a dedicated diagnostic CT mm -hmm. scan or PET CT or potentially a biopsy. Well, I have tons more questions. Will you come back? 
I would love to come back. Yes, yeah, so I we think we have a lot more to talk about. We make it very easy for you. So there's so much to talk about. And um, I want to remind everyone that your practice is right down the street. That's right. On 17. And uh, please do come back. So thank you very much for being here today. Again, thank you for having me. I would love to come back anytime. Great. Now let's welcome Kevin Hodge, Program Manager and Chief Transport RN for AirLink and Vitalink Critical Care Transport with NHRMC and now Novant Health. Yeah. So Kevin, welcome back. Thanks. It's been a while. It has been a long time. It's always a yes, pleasure to talk I to you, Jean. I think it was like 2019 when we yeah. first got the helicopter yep. here. It's almost been two years now. That was an exciting day for all of us. We were all there. but. Um, it's even more exciting now because we're a lot busier. <laughs> so, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you're an RN and uh, tell me about your background and how did you come to be in your current position? Yeah, so I'm a registered nurse by trade. I've been a registered nurse for 24 years. Uh -huh. uh, I grew up in the emergency department in the ICUs in Kentucky. Um, actually relocated with my family back in 2003 worked in the emergency department uh, in Wilmington and then transitioned over uh, to Airlink Bonalink as a critical care transport nurse. I've done all facets of the program from mm -hmm. staffing, ground to air and in between. I've been in my current position since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, what drove me into this position is really uh, from a patient care perspective, I always tried to put the patient first. Mm -hmm. And I think as a leader, it gives me an opportunity to make decisions that continue to impact patient care just at a different level. Right, well there's a huge need for that. And I, could you give me an overview of the AirLink program? Um, how many helicopters do we have? Yeah, so we currently have three helicopters. One is based here at the uh, Brunswick campus. And we're uh, so lucky. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, the second one is uh, based at Columbus Regional Healthcare System in Whiteville. And right. then the third one is based at Albert J. Ellis in uh, Jacksonville. Uh, we just celebrated our 20th year anniversary. So our first aircraft uh, took its first mission back in 2001. Uh, and we've obviously grown and evolved to the needs of our patients and our community. So it's been an extremely exciting journey for us. Yeah. Well, I know initially when we started the program here, it was here um, just certain times of the day or peak times mm -hmm. and and maybe 12 hours a day, but when uh, within the first year, it went to round the clock That's coverage. Correct. So tell me how that helps our community. Yeah, sure. So when we first started, we actually pulled data from the hospital here, as well uh -huh. as our EMS partners in the community and established those peak times where most of the traumas occurred or the STEMIs occurred, the heart attack victims, et cetera. Yeah. Quickly into that, we realized after hours when the helicopter was not here, the calls continued to come in. Right. Uh, which allowed us to really grow that uh, model into a 24-7. The other, the other thing when you're talking about 24-7 oper operations is if you're a provider in the field, you don't want to have to guess, is our helicopter there or not? Did they go home for the day, right? Yeah. So that allowed us to really grow that. Um, since, since that time for the you know, last year or so, I looked back at some numbers just to see what impact uh, we had had within the community. And, and currently for the last year, we're setting at 400 flights out of this air base alone. Uh, for the program, it's a busy program. We're looking at it probably about 1,300 patient transports this year. Um, so a lot of time spent in the year and a lot of lives impacted by it. Wow, and that's such critical time when you're either in a car accident or you're having a heart attack or a stroke. Or, Absolutely. Um, well, before the um, helicopter was based here, um, patients who needed transport for, to um, different uh, facilities, they waited for the Airlink heli helicopter to come here. And then sometimes they were transported by ground. Right. Now we still have the luxury of having that ground transportation, Absolutely. correct? Yes. So in addition to the helicopter, we still have the Vitalink um, ground transport. That is correct. And is that, um, so if the helicopter is gone, do we resort to using the Vitalink? Yeah, so in the event that the helicopter's on a mission um, or the weather is bad where we can't fly. Oh, I never thought about that. Then yes, we would revert back to our critical care ground component, which is Vitalink. Um, we actually celebrated our 30th year anniversary for Vitalink wow. this year. So they've been around for a long time. 
Uh, and on that ground configuration, it's set up just like the helicopter in that you have critical care providers providing ICU level me uh, medicine. So mm. it's, it's a good asset. How long is that trip via Vitalink from here to New Hanover? Yeah, so from here to New Hanover, running emergency traffic, lights and sirens, um, pending the bridge is not up yeah, open. and tourist season is not in full swing and we have backups, um, roughly around 45 minutes. To lift here with a helicopter, it's around 8 to 10 minutes, if that puts it in perspective. That's a lifesaver. Yeah, significant difference. Wow, significant. So I know that AirLink works with our first responders and our mm -hmm. local um, emergency services. Tell me um, how that works. How do you coordinate that? Do they call you or do we call you or how does that work? That's a great question and I would be amiss if I didn't like pause just for a second and just you know throw a shout out uh, to our providers in the field who have yeah. you know they've rose to the challenge with the pandemic right. and <laughs> they put themselves uh, at risk and they really work tirelessly hours to provide that service to the community. So shout out uh, to all of our providers out in the field. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, to answer your question directly, June, it, it's a well-coordinated system. Um, so you always tabletop these, you plan these out so that there's a standard approach and when the emergency arises, you're not trying to figure it out on the fly, right? right. So what we've done is we've partnered with the local providers uh, here in Brunswick County and actually set up designated landing zones. So mm -hmm. we know there's rendezvous oh, okay. points throughout the entire county. And what that serves or the purpose for that is we want to make sure that the aircraft is, is indeed the fastest mode of transport and that it's a well-coordinated where they're not sitting on the ground waiting for a helicopter for 10, 15 minutes. Right. So in the ideal world, uh, they would activate through our trans, uh, their 911 system calls our transfer center. Yes. Who then activates the helicopter. The helicopter then lifts and intercepts at some point uh, with oh. a landing zone, picks up the patient, and then goes direct to the appropriate facility. Mm -hmm. So it's a very coordinated oh. effort. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes a lot of communication, a lot of training, and we've really um, been pleased with the interactions we've had with the local providers. Wow, here. that's awesome. That takes a lot of effort to get that, to make that happen. Um, I'm curious, what kind of interventions uh, would um, a flight nurse um, maybe do or have on the helicopter? Yeah, so just briefly, I mean, our mission has always been to provide excellent patient care. Right. And it's not just rapid transport of eight mm -hmm. to 10 minutes. It's really focused on bringing that ICU level quality care right straight to the patient at the bedside. Mm -hmm. With that said, our nurses and critical care paramedics go through extensive training to provide that level of care. Uh, we carry blood products, we ventilate, we intubate, uh, we pace. We can do anything that pretty much is done in an ICU and they carry a, all their equipment and pretty much an entire pharmacy with them to provide that care. Wow. Um, so a lot of people think about a helicopter, it's well, how fast can you get, can there? You get there? Speed does impact patient outcomes, right. obviously, but we just don't grab them, throw them on a stretcher no. and fly. They really bring that excellence of care um, to the bedside with the patient. And it starts right then and there, not waiting until they're transported to definitive care. I can't imagine intubating a patient on um, a helicopter. That must be a feat. Uh, well, it is, and you know, technology, it's, right. a, it's a huge blessing. I mean, yeah. we have video laryngoscopy now, so we really <laughs> yeah. have moved beyond oh, some of the yeah, non-traditional or the older type techniques where, you know, you were using a blade and visually identifying yeah. your landmarks. Now, uh, we have technology that aids us with that. And then obviously it goes back to training. You know, we spend hours training so that when the emergency arises, we get it right the first time. Yeah. Well, I can't tell you how excited we are to have you all as part of the Novant Health family. I take every opportunity to say that to as many people who will listen, because I think it's a marriage made in heaven. Right. Um, together, we can make a world of difference to this community and to our patients. So, Kevin, will you come back soon? Because we're out of time. Absolutely. Don't um, wait two years. Yeah, anytime, June. It's up you to me, me, right? On. I just have it's, to call it's you. It's on you. <laughs> you. Just give me a call. I, I love talking to you. I love talking about our program. And, uh, I do, too. And more importantly, you know, I think Novant Health is living out its vision of really providing remarkable care to our patients. And, again, this is one of the many tools that we have to right. offer. And, and great team, great organization. Right. And I'm, I'm glad that we can actually serve together in this community. So thank you. And thank you for coming, and I can't wait till you come back.
Thank you for tuning in to ATMC TV's Health Watch. I hope you find this information to be valuable and helpful to your family. If you have any questions or you're looking for resources or new physicians, please visit our website at novanthealth.org. So until next time, stay safe out there and we'll see you soon.